my, my, my. Is that a wand in your pocket? Or are you just happy to be listening to The Wizard? Only on 6663 WZRD. Alright. Hi, everybody. You're listening to The Wizard. Hey. <laughs> Only on 6663 WZRD. <laughs> uh, Welcome back. Your host, Violet Philamus. I'm joined today by the illustrious, the, uh, the uh, beautiful... The, oh. Uh, are you caster flirti- of the ages? Are you flirting with me? I was just finding adjectives, buddy. All but right, sure. uh, it's me. It's Benedict Balthazar, the seventy seventh. Oh yeah, conjurer and diviner, as oh, you all yeah. know. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome back to the wizard. It's it's great, it's great, great to, to be, be here back. again. Um, yeah. you know, had a bit of a had a bit of a weird time last episode. Wendell and kind of went off the rails a little yeah, bit. Was, you know, uh, we tr- we were trying something new with the live ads and I think we learned our lesson. I don't think we have. I think they're still doing the live ads. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. It's it's good to know that this workplace does care about our safety. Uh, yeah, 100%. But you know what, um, speaking of our safety, let's mm-hmm. you know, let's let's get into it. Let's let's talk about what happened. Yeah. Um So Wendell and of Wendelin's yes. Ancient Artisanal Sandwiches. Yes, yes, yes. Um, recently attacked the WZR studio, WZRD studio, um, as well as most of the city, uh, mm. due to the fact that... So they found the end of the Infinite Bacon Cheeseburger, yes, as we discussed. She was going a little nuts about it. Yeah, and so she ended up summoning um, Porkron the Greasy, Stopper her, of Hearts. Yes, her Eldritch Bacon patron. Yeah, he's like a, a big, gross pig with... Uh, little demon wings. Yeah, monster very, pig. Yeah, very icky. Very, um, ugh, God, the smell. Oh, God, it's it was still, horrible. Like, I feel like it's still not out of the cracks and crevices of do you ever? Body. Do you ever, like, do you ever, like, take a shower and you put a shirt on too early and so it feels wet, but it's not? Yeah. That's kind of what it I, what it feels like now. It was so greasy. Yeah. Oh like, my the God. grease was in the air. But um, she summoned Porkron to ravage the city to take her revenge. Uh, however, the local Thankfully. the local adventuring party that yeah, is still, still yet unnamed unnamed um, was managed to defeat Porkron and Wendelin has been imprisoned for her crimes. So pretty sweet. Th- thanks, guys. Yeah, uh, shouts out. I think we have uh, some uh, special exclusives later about this. Yes, yes, Very we are. We are going to be uh, speaking soon with. Uh, Glark, the party's ranger. Yes, very um, exciting. In in the in this episode, I think they're waiting in the green room right now. Yeah, yeah. So why don't you why don't you take us take us away from some of that sour? Oh sure, yeah. Some of that sourness. Yeah, in other local news, uh, Falgernor the Stoic, local philosopher, has decided to turn himself into a stone monolith in the center of town. Uh, though this is an eyesore, the plinth has become sort of an arcane hotspot in the city, allowing wizards to draw its magical energy. Uh, this is cool and kind of annoying. Yeah, I agree. You know, as most uh, monk types are, mm-hmm. they always love to make a show of how dedicated they are to being cool. Yeah. And like... Which, you know, fair enough. Good job. They're pretty cool. I guess you don't like... You, oh, don't, need to, you don't need to stop traffic. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Like, it's like if, good if, job. You don't. If fuck. he if he did this in like a park, or Great. even like wonderful, even like in the city square or something. Yeah, that would have been fine. He did it in the middle of the street. Yeah, uh, it, it, sure. Like a main road that runs through town. Yeah. Oh, and they cannot move it. No. Like it is. We've. It has been tried. So many casters. So so many different spells have been cast on it. Um, it is. It appears to be like immune to spells. Yes. Yeah, it just absorbs the energy, and you can take it back out. Yeah, and which uh, great for so, uh, arcane hotspot. I'm you know I'm good on it, mm-hmm. but man, it would have been really nice for him to choose a fucking convenient place to put it. Yeah, like seriously, I don't, I don't get it. You I know? don't, I don't understand why you you do that to everybody because he's got he he had to have known. Oh yeah, like he's lived here for a guy. That, listen, I've he's met lived him. here for years. I, I've met him for a guy that's so stoic. He is petty. Oh yeah, I'm sure this is some dispute with some the guy city council twenty years ago who said, "Hey, you can't meditate here," and he said, "Well, guess what, bitch? Now you can't stop me." Yeah, like oh god. Now I uh, I believe they are bringing in a group of uh, local uh, barbarians to try and 
use their rage strength to lift it and move it to another location, which may work. May have. Um, or I, we might have a we might have a sword in the stone situation. Yeah, there. we might just yeah, we might have to wait until the or chosen one comes along. The boulder along. in the ground. Or the stone in the stone, if you will. Um, yes. Or, you know, we might just have to rebuild the road around it. Yeah, I mean, roundabouts are great anyway. Might Ra- as well take Roundabouts it as are excuse. awesome, but, it, you know, we'd have to move all the buildings as well. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, we got just, it's a hassle. Yeah. It, oh, sure. It's, it's, it's not an impossible problem to deal with. No, but those, those people also but have we shouldn't, magic insurance. Yeah, we like, shouldn't be having to deal with it, though, is what I'm saying. Uh, that's fair. Falgenor yeah. should have been a little more mindful yeah. of... Everybody who no, he was not beefing with. with. Yeah. The, the rest of the city. Yeah, literally the rest of the city. But, you know, um, in other news, mm-hmm. a series of robberies uh, have been occurring throughout the shops in Navas. All of these robberies are uh, only linked by two consistent things found at each crime scene, mm-hmm. uh, which are the faint scent of cigarette smoke yeah. and vintage photographs of a masked man believed to be the culprit having sex with the shop owner's mother. Damn. Right? That's uh, crazy. Every Each of these photos also comes with a note on the back explaining that everyone came and it was a good time. So, oh. I, I, you know, at least he's not a selfish lover, I guess. You know, I mean, shit. This sounds like a nefarious ne'er-do-well, but also, what a, what a, what a... How bold. S- yeah, what a ballsy move to not only rob a shop, but have the, have the precognition to find this person's mother and have <laughs> sex with her yeah and either hope that her husband's dead or convince her to cheat on him <laughs> right that's pretty wild that's insane it's it's happening with all of them this has happened to like five shops so far yes oh pardon so me. let me make a sorry oh, husband wife or other My oh bad. yes of My course bad. of course like it's 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 bizarre truly yeah. like I mean, it, it is pretty crazy. It's insane how consistent it is. Yeah. What? How many shops has this happened to? Uh, uh, I believe five so far. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, what a baller. To be fair. What a baller. Like, it sucks. It sucks does suck. The, they should have insurance, though. Yeah. You know, I don't with know. All, with the amount of adventurers that come through this city. Oh, my God. They have the money for insurance. Yeah, but what a rogue. What a rogue in the trail. What a, like, what a roguish sense. man. Yeah. In like in not the like sneaky open it box good kind of way, but in like a oh what a what a brash rogue of a man. Yeah, like a a roguish fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. But well, yeah, that's that's about it for our our local news this week. Um coming in next, we got good old Traffic Bot. Good old traffic bot telling us about the traffic this week. Yeah, what here, you? let me boot him on real quick. Activating. All right, there we go. We got a Hello. Oh, there we go. Hey, okay. what's up, traffic? Bot? I am the traffic bot. Yep. You want to? You sure are, bot. You want to tell us that weather, buddy, Roo? Yes. Great. I have spent these past months analyzing the traffic of the earth, sea, and sky. Okay. All right. Hit, so, hit, sounds hit good. Well, you know, let's get let's get Earth first. Why don't we? Yeah. Certainly. Worms are bursting from the ground for their centennial mating season, Ooh. often beneath roads and cities. Oh, that's a, that's a rough oh. one. Oh, yeah. Because, well, we're, for those who don't know, worms uh, With only, only mate every century or yes. so. And when they're not, they normally stay underground. For that entire time, mm-hmm. and often make nests beneath cities because of how warm it is. Yep, people there's are a lot of stuff going on above that warms the ground. Yeah, or it's just like, hey, this place is really nice and flat and very fertile. Mm-hmm. Wonder why? Guess we'll make a town here. Yeah, and then a worm bursts from the ground. Yeah, looking to fuck. You know, they got to yeah, do who, what they got to do. Yeah, they're animals. Who can blame them? Um, what else we got traffic about? What we got in the uh, the sea? The sea. The recent rising of Atlantis from the sea has disrupted ocean currents and displaced sea creatures. A remapping of the ocean is taking place. Okay, well, that's good. Hopefully that gets done quick. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, that would... Don't let Kyle hear this. No, no, he's going to lose his mind. (laughs) Um, Yeah, like, that would 
mess with the ocean currents really bad if there was suddenly a whole new land mass that they had to account for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's going to fuck with Cannon Run, isn't it? Well, the season's over. Right, but next season. No, because it, 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 it takes place in, like, two miles. There's, like, hundreds of miles of ocean between... Oh, fair enough. Candelia and uh, Odisha. Fair enough. We should be okay. I hope so. Uh, not, what about... Hey, new uh, new stuff for the new season. You know, you got a point there. Ooh, I wonder if the Atlanteans want to make a team. Keeping it fresh, yes. I'd, I'd, I'd love Atlantean Cannon Run. They pro- it's probably insane. Oh, I'm sure they'd be busted. Yeah. Um, well, what about... What about um, what about in the skies today, traffic bot? In the skies, a hot air balloon hanger accidentally left its doors open. Tragic. Causing the balloons to float out into the sky. Oh no. Watch for rogue unpiloted balloons and rogue spells meant to strike them down. I feel like this is uh, this is gross negligence yeah. on the owner's part. Yeah, Why are your hot air balloons constantly lit? I, I mean, I guess... It just the, seems like a waste of magical energy. Or a waste of gas. Yeah, oh my god. E, that's even worse than wasting magical At least if I take a nap, I can replenish the spells. Yeah, real. <laughs> you, you, you gotta pay for the gas. Yeah, <laughs> There's only yeah. so much of it. Is there, like, any, like, reward for hunting these planes down, Traffic Bot? Not planes, my bad, balloons. No. Well, awesome. that's wonderful. Well, um, watch out for the balloons. Uh, try not to shoot any of them down yourself. We... There should be higher... That's got to be dangerous. What about people that are piloting hot air balloons? <laughs> you better hope those uh, those mercs that got hired to shoot them down get the right numbers. Yeah. Um, all right, well, uh, maybe don't... If you fl- if you are a hot air balloon pilot, an aeronaut, I believe they're called. I believe so, yes. Um, don't today. Yeah, or like for like the next couple days. Yeah. Sorry if that's your way to work. Call uh, out. Get less weird, I guess. Yeah, why are you flying a hot air balloon to work? I mean, very funny. I can very appreciate so. I, the commitment. I, I the can bit. appreciate the whimsy. But also, come on, dude. Right, well, uh, I think that's all from Traffic Bot. Yes. All right, I'm going to shut them down. Shutting down. Okay, wonderful. Um, all right. We yeah. got we to gotta get a new traffic guy. Yeah, or like... A traffic guy in general. Yeah, he's like I don't I like traffic bot, but like don't don't he I think he doesn't actually ever turn off. Anyway, let's go to ads. Uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna wheel traffic bot back out of here. Uh, let's, yeah, let's wheel him into the storage closet. Yeah, well, uh, let's let's hear from uh, Dorvinson Smithy. We'll see us after the break. Greetings, travelers. It's me, Dingle Dorvinson. And thanks to the armor from Dorvinson, Smithy, and Spartan Goods, I was able to survive Wendelin's attack. Come to Dorvinson's for all your armor, weapons, and Spartan gear needs. We sell gauntlets, shields, swords, axes, baseball bats, clubs, helmets for your sport and blood sport, and so much more. Come to Dorvinson Smithy and Spartan Goods for armor that will protect you from crazed bacon witches. Take it from me after you pay me, of course. Oh, it is I, <laughs> Bing Plus. From Bing Plus's Emporium, we are the arcane providers of all magical items used but not abused. We are the resale for your needs. Come on down, we have slightly used wands only at Bing Plus's. We have orbs with a couple of chips in them. Only at Bing Pluses. We have a tome that has bitten off the fingers of every single wizard who has attempted to read it. It won't be you, I promise. Come down to Bing Pluses Emporium, for we have what you need. All magic items used, but not abused. 
Bing Blossom Emporium. Welcome back to The Wizard, only on 6663 WZRD. All right. All right. Coming back to you from those ads. Hope you enjoyed them. Um, I enjoyed them, personally. Yeah. Um, to start us off, or I guess not to start us off, but to get into the meat of this episode, uh, we have a very special treat yes. on our hands today for our lovely listening audience. Yes. Um, would, you like, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, hi there. My name is Glark McCracken. That's uh, Glark with a G. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Just want to double check. Um, and if you don't know Glark, uh, they are a member of the adventuring party that so bravely took down Porker on the Greasy, Clogger of Arteries. Uh, but they have been uh, laid up in bed recently, so we got them on for an interview. Yeah, you actually... Um for the for the listeners at home that can't see this, you are in a full body cast from the neck down right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. Are I you? I would be uh, probably writhing in pain if it wasn't for uh, how many restorations right, right. had to be, uh, you know, help me out, kind of uh, build me back up. Right. How yeah, you, how are you feeling today? Are, are are you having a lot of pain right now? Oh, none of the moment. They got you. They got you hooked up with the good stuff. <laughs> oh, I. If you, uh, whenever you're traveling with a, a party kind of like mine, you can really afford the good, uh, the good insurance. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not really, I'm not really too worried about it. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty hopped up on the good stuff. You, you guys time. also did just kill a dragon a few weeks ago, so yeah, you know, you d- oh, because yeah, we got the whole horde. So yeah, yeah, yeah. probably pretty set. That was, um, it was a red dragon too. They have huge hordes. Oh yeah, yeah. So let's just get into it. Uh, who are you? What do you do? What, uh, what's your role? What's your class? Uh, well, uh. I guess, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm again, uh, Dlark McCracken, and I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a human ranger for an adventuring party, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, you know, I just kind of travel around, uh, going on adventures, taking quests, mm-hmm. uh, anything really that kind of uh, gets me out in the world, gets, gets me to meet people, uh, I'm a talker, so, oh, yeah. Oh, sure. That's, that's good. So, like, we don't, you don't really hear, like, in like the famous tales and songs, uh, you don't really hear like a whole lot about about rangers. So, what made you like decide that you wanted to become a ranger? Well, you know, my uh, my old man was a ranger, and uh, yeah, one day I just kind of uh, picked up his bow. He taught me how to use it, and next thing I knew, I was a uh, I was shooting straight and narrow. Nice, nice, wonderful. Do you have a, a favorite enemy to share with the audience? Oh. You know I'd that. say my favorite enemy, you know, I'm always a sucker for boars. Um, I'm sure that came in handy recently. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, Pork Ron, he's, he was one tough customer. <laughs> right. Sure. Big, yeah. old, big old pig guy with, with wings and 70 eyes, I think. Uh, yeah, you could probably be more accurate about it. 70? <laughs> well, whenever we were through with him, it was about, uh, it was about 60 eyes. But, hey, you know, not nice, to pat ourselves nice. on the back or anything. Yeah, Mo- so most of your work, I assume. Oh, somewhat. You know, I was mostly, I was aiming for the eyes because there's so many of them. But I, you know, he's so greasy that, you mm-hmm. know, some of those arrows just kind of slid right off. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, I hate to see it. Yeah, there was like a thick Sounds layer gross. of grease on that. <laughs> and he, again, he was one tough customer. I mean, as as you can see, I am, uh, I'm, I'm pretty banged up. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. But, yeah, those eyes were... Uh, Something to behold. Something to behold. Yeah, like, some might say, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. I like what you did there." Speaking speaking of your of the battle and your injuries, how did you get injured? What what did he do to you that did this? Oh well, you know, as a ranger, I like to kind of stay far away. Right. But um, he so he was so big that even whenever I kind of came in, you know, he was so big. He, whenever we finally kind of took him down, he was swaying back and forth, and I got a little too confident, got a little too close, and whenever he fell, he. Uh, you know, all of those uh, 60 eyes, they kind of landed right on me. Oh. Oh, so it was post-battle. Yeah, I, yeah, it was kind of post-battle. Gotcha. I, I gotcha. see, I see. That's got to that's gotta hurt. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did kind of go into a state of shock, mm-hmm. but, you know, whenever I kind of came out of it, it was, uh, you know, I think I, yeah, I'm not going to really go into too much detail about that. Good, good deal. Good sure, deal. sure, yeah, absolutely. Of course. Um, so you've been traveling around with this party for a bit of time now. How did that kind of come about? Was it a friends to coworkers thing? Was it just like found a job board? What 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 happened there? 
Well, I guess kind of the interesting thing there is like one day, you know, I was out hunt, hunting boars, uh, funny enough, and uh, well, you know, I, I kind of stumbled across the party. They were killing, uh, you know, some of those wear bears. It was some of the bad ones, you know. The, sure. You know, right. you know sure, sometimes sure. they go a little stray. Yeah, but, they got you know, those bear colts. Some, some lycanthropes go a little feral sometimes. Yeah, it and happens. you know what? It's, it's un- very sad. It's unfortunate, you know. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's an illness, and I, 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 don't want to stigmatize anybody, but you know, whenever they do go a little, a little cuckoo, uh, and they start hurting some people, yeah, they they in that adventuring party took took down one of those people. Unfortunately, that it got to that point, but uh, yeah, you know, I met him, stumbled across him into the woods, and then I, uh, as I said, I'm a talker and I, I'm a walker too, so I'm a talker walker. I struck up a conversation with him, and next thing I knew, I was at the gates of a. Uh, of one of the nine hells, it was a pretty neat weekend for me. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. It, it, you know, it happens. Who, who among us has not randomly appeared at the gates of the nine hells, or the many seventeen to twenty-seven? As yeah, far there's, as we know. Th- there's a lot more layers. You know, I don't remember much past. No, I don't remember much past layer six. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, this is in reference to a previous thing. Right. Yeah, we uh, went on oh, a little. We went on a little. Oh yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a, a I'm a long time I'm a long time listener, big big fan. I'm I'm happy you oh, y'all let me on. And cool. yeah, no, Wonderful. I heard about your Glad little adventure with uh Very good. with us uh, with Satan and was it Rashael? Ra- Rashael. Yes. Yeah, we had a we had a great time mm. down in the Nine Hells. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, we first we we've only been with the studio for a short time um, after the unfortunate deaths of uh, Master Side Attack of the Grand Assembly and. Mistress Lyrica, Spy- Mistress yeah. Lyrica Spiderwind. Um, they were both killed in that dragon attack a few weeks ago. Uh, the dragon which you and your fellow adventurers were able to slay. So, like, what was that like? What was it like getting to slay a dragon, especially like as such a such a like low level party? That's a huge feat for a group as new oh, as yours. Yeah, you know, it was a whole team effort. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know. Gronkok, our barbarian, he was in there chopping away at the feet. He mm-hmm. was really in there with his, uh, you know, he has that battle axe that's been in his family for I don't even know how long. Right. And, you know, Angelica, our wizard, she she was out there casting spells. She had to keep her distance, you know. She's uh, oh, she can't take too much damage. But yeah. Uh, yep. Not, we, we can't all be abjurers. Yeah, and you know, I was again keeping my distance, shooting all my arrows. I don't have any specialty arrows or anything. I make them all in my cabin. Mm-hmm. But wonderful. Oh yeah, you know, especially in this economy, even oh, with yeah. even with sure. the dragon sword, you know, I like to I tried to keep myself humble. But uh, yeah, no, it was it was really fantastic, and I was really happy that all of us were there. And unfortunately, we um, we weren't able to come in time and you know save some people. But if it if it means anything, I'm. Uh, I think you two are doing some great work here. So. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Glark. So, yeah. so like going back like to the dragon attack, like who was it who got that final blow? Well, uh, again, not to uh, not to pat myself on the back or anything. It was a it was a, a team effort, and you know, if it wasn't for all those scales on the belly being peeled off, my arrow would not have met the dragon's heart. But I will say, I will say, again, team effort, I cannot take all the, I cannot take all the credit, but I will say it was my arrow that pierced the heart. That That always feels great. That is huge. Like, Uh, good, good on you for being so humble about it, because I would not be. Yeah, me as (laughs) well. Like, if if I, if I got the last, my current state of my mastery of the arcane, if I was able to land a killing blow on an adult red dragon like that, I would I wouldn't shut up about it ever. <laughs> like y- like you would never hear the end of it. Yeah, well, so you that's know, huge. I'm, I, you know, I'm just from I'm just from the forest, and I'm just you know just your average your average ranger. Good you know, on I'm, you. Good I'm on I'm you, not man. a hero or anything. I'm I'm just I'm Clark. You sure are great. So, uh, speaking of speaking of fights, how was how was the rest of the fight with Porkron? Like we yeah, heard about, we heard crushed. about you getting crushed. We heard about the seventy eyes. Like was, was it a hard fight? Would you say like one of the hardest? Oh yeah, you know, with his with his big old wings and everything too. It was, it was it was pretty difficult. You know, you'd go in for the legs and he would do a little hop, skip, and flutter those wings a little bit, and he'd be like, I don't know, 
15 to 30 feet off the ground mm -hmm. easy and uh all those eyes you know he could see in every direction that's kind of why i was going for him but uh you know it was it, he was a tough character but you know a little chopping a little bit of fireball a little bit of lightning you know b between you and me You two know uh, testicular chores? The y yes, the we do. The spell. Listen, definitely came in handy. I will say. You know, Off the despite recent controversies surrounding the spell, it's a very I useful combat spell. Absolutely. I feel that the council would make an exception in this instance. Yeah, you know, and sometimes you just have to file the paperwork. I mean, we yeah. don't we don't know who cast the spell. Oh, it could have been anybody. It could have been anybody. You know? Could have been anybody that Who's twisted Porkron's nuts. Like, yeah, you know, if any of those arcane... plus, like casting shit yourself on Porkron, bad idea. Oh, it would have been a whole on mess. something that large. It probably would have that caused been a, a lot, deluge. Would have been causing oh. more trouble than it would have been worth. Absolutely, because you're not going to humiliate something that goes by the title the greasy. Yeah, and you know, especially too is. The from what I've been told, the uh, the outside was greasy, and I've been told that even the insides were uh, not yeah. too uh, not too appetizing themselves. Yeah, I've yeah. heard that he has um, just like like fat oil. It's for essentially blood. gelatinous. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, is, can you can you verify that? Did he have oil, like hot oil for blood? Oh, you. I mean, you could you could stock an entire candle store with everything that was in there. Wow. Damn. Gross. It sounds it, like it would smell real good. Did though. it smell good? It was just it like, like, like fresh cooked bacon. You know, at first, it smelled it, it smelled pretty terrible. But you know, again, pork Ron, pork, you, a meaty man. Well, yeah, he's, he's a meaty man. You 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 get him a little hot. You get him a little toasty. You got got you got breakfast. He is the Lord mm. of Bacon. Yeah, after all, undeniably so. Yeah. So I wonder who's gonna take the throne now that he's out of the picture. I don't know. And now that Wendelin's in jail and everything. <laughs> Maybe she'll ascend. That would be funny. Maybe. Maybe she'll take the throne and become the bacon Lord queen. Of bacon. Yeah. Yeah, but. Well, wonderful. Wonderful. Do uh, you have any parting words for us, Glark? Yeah, anything you'd like to share with the folks back home? Anything you want to plug? Oh, you know, I always got uh, I always got to plug the adventuring party. All those fellas are always doing so much hard work. So uh, shout out, shout out all my uh, my pals and friendos over there. Um, shout out you guys. Thank you for having me on. Oh, of course. Thanks for coming on. You know, what? Sp speaking of which, you're giving a shout out to your friends, to your adventuring party, and I love that. I love that. We need a name for this adventuring party, my man. Like we we Ooh. need something to call you guys. Like in oh, oh, the Courageous Cavalry. Courageous Cavalry? Is that you know? a decided name or is that a... You know, if I'm, if I'm, we haven't decided one, you know, because, you know, sometimes whenever there's those friend groups who give themselves names, it's like, oh, you don't like, you know, you know, when you were all in like junior high or high school, those friend groups who gave themselves names, sometimes yeah. they were cool. Some, most of the time they were pretty cringy. Yeah. So we, we've been kind of trying to avoid it, you know, let it happen naturally. But, you know, it is just natural for an adventuring party to... Branding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Because in a way, that you guys are running a business in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, I hadn't thought about it like you know, that. Yeah, like in a roundabout yeah. way of thinking. You, you guys are freelancers, essentially. Yeah. You know I what? I would say, by definition. Just, you're just freelancers with swords and magic. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, how about placeholder name? Courageous Calvary. Okay. But, okay. you know... We come back maybe another time. We get some more. We I talk to the crew, and we see where it goes. Get some Abs official going. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, thank you for for stepping on with us. Oh, absolutely. We really we really appreciate you being here. Yeah, we'll get you uh, teleported out because I know you can't walk. <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure that you get back to your to your uh, hospital bed safe and sound. But All right. have a good one, Glark. You too. All right. So that was uh, Glark McCracken of the Courageous Cavalry. Name pending. Name pending. Uh, 
Uh, saviors Sl- of our city twice over. Now. Yep, slayers of that one dragon and Porkron, the greasy stopper of hearts. Yeah. What a what a nice guy. Like a, yeah. super, I've never Stand met up. somebody so humble. Granted, I have surrounded myself with wizards for most of my life. Yeah, wizards rangers are, are generally much better people than us. Wizards are not known for their humility. Humility, yeah. <laughs> we, Which, hey, I'm among we, that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not known for my humility. If I once I make a great accomplishment like that, I'm not gonna stop talking about it. Yeah, uh, mm, yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Yep. But uh, we got some some more news for you coming up after these ads so but sit tight stick around sit tight stick around and we'll grace your eardrums a little more magic in just a couple minutes are you a swarm ranger are you a beekeeper do you just like bees well come on down to bee holders we're your temporary apiary do you need bee wi-fi a bee bed? I don't know. Do you need a bee spa, bee sauna? Well, don't worry, because we'll take your bees and we'll treat them right, too. So come on down to Bee Holders. We're the bee's knees. Hey there, brother. It's me, Festus Hair. Owner and operator of the Bronze Dragon. Are you looking for a place to drink with all your buddies, no matter their shape or size? Then look no further than the Bronze Dragon. We offer seating for all manner of creatures, from one foot to sixty feet. Whether you're a fairy or a dragon, there's no better place to drink than the Bronze Dragon. Come in on Saturday night, and the first drink is on me, brother. Hell yeah! You're listening to WZRD, The Wizard. Welcome back. Uh, howdy, everybody. Welcome back to The Wizard, only on WZRD. Uh, let's, let's kick off into this section after our wonderful interview uh, mm-hmm. with... Uh, this week's Monsters Machinations, baby. What, what do we got? What do we got this week? Today we're talking about Demi Liches. Ooh. Now, uh, for those of you who are unaware, Liches are those uh, wizards who tend to get a little too big for their britches. They decide that they want to... Big for their liches, you could say. Uh, you could say. I won't. <laughs> um, but they basically decide that they are going to... Uh, ascend this mortal coil by taking their soul and turning it into a piece of arcane art and putting it in a box somewhere and hiding it away so that their body can rot away into nothing while they continue to live or die uh, forever as kind of crazy undead individuals. Um, They also do consume souls. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's like one of the big things. Um, So you'd think Demi-Lich, well... From a word's perspective, demi means less than half, or half, I suppose, uh, to be correct. Less than. Yeah, less than. Um, so you'd expect a demi-lich to be less powerful than a lich, but in fact, these are liches that have ascended past lichdom and gone fully insane and turned into just floating skulls. Yeah, it's kind, uh, of, a, kind of a misnomer there. Yeah, because they are so powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, so generally, if you're in a temple or a tomb that is ancient, and there's a big skull in the wall with gems for eyes and a malicious aura <laughs> spilling off of it. Maybe don't fuck with it. Maybe not. Because uh, that is, A, just a bad general good dungeoneering. Mm-hmm. You know, see a spooky thing, don't poke it with a stick. Um, Which, ironically, is exact, exactly the opposite of what they teach you in wizard school. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a lot of wizard school's dungeoneering courses are truly horrific for survivability um but for studying studying pretty pretty tight but you don't really need that when you're you know yeah a casual adventurer so watch out for skulls with gems for eyes watch out for big floaty uh kind of skeleton looking things if you're going into something's lair an ancient dungeon um watch out for a bunch of undead minions that'll usually be a tell that some kind of undead lord is at the bottom um, or someone who's trying to become an undead lord. It's a whole thing. 
Mm -hmm. Um, If you see a giant well that seemingly never flowed with water uh, and is used for capturing souls, don't touch it. Um, Again, these are kind of just general good dungeoneering tips. This generally just kind of seems like good advice. Yeah, if you're if you are a low, uh, not to be you know levelist, but if you're a low level caster or a low level party, generally avoid these guys if you can because they are um, nasty and they'll eat your soul. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's it for monstrous machinations. You want to take it away with our first global event of the week? Oh, of course. Um, Sadly. Uh, kind of some some bad news to kick us off here. Mm. Uh, the bloodworm pandemic has worsened mm. due to people still listening to the worms in their brain. Uh, the infected have begun flocking by the hundreds to a mysterious abandoned keep in the southwest regions of Ravenmount. Bad. Investigators have been dispatched, uh, but none have returned after entering the keep. So we're probably dealing with some kind of brood mother here. Yeah, some kind of like like central sort of commanding mass to this yeah. weird hive of worms. Um, probably either some kind of other, like, greater blood worm or maybe some kind of wizard who is controlling them. Yeah, either way. Raven Mount. Come on. Yeah, I mean, either way. Bad deal. On. Bad but, time. Uh, again, if you, if you are having thoughts like, man, I need to hang out with my friend the brain worm today. Or, man, I really can't go to work. I have to hang out with the brain worm. Or I would love to feed the brain worm more brains. I can't wait to be spawning ground for more brain worms. You seek should, help. Seek help. And if, especially if you're thinking, man, I should go to the southwest region of Ravenmount to that abandoned keep. Seek help. Yeah. Go find a cleric. They're good for something. Yeah, a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, in other news, kind of related to Ravenmount, uh, the Arcanotech deal brokered by Xandria Flamus, my uncle, uh, with Raven Mount has been disbanded due to the spooky inventions being far too dangerous for civilian life. Mm-hmm. What what kind of what kind of spooky inventions are we talking here? Well, let's get into it. Um, so, uh, from a brief list of things that uh, was shared with me mm-hmm. by my wonderful uncle uh, when I asked him for an interview, and he said no. Yeah, um, that happens. Yeah, but he he did give me this list. So, uh, things like the skin flare, Pretty the living Iron Maiden, the mega stretcher. The anal defibrillator. Oh. The orifice sealer. Ooh. The melon baller, which seems oh. pretty fine. Uh, the teeth piano. Ooh. Uh, yeah. The rat box soul switcher. Mm. Awful. And the Glock 19 with extended mag. The what? Uh, the rat box soul switcher. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> um, I believe it is a box that switches your soul uh, with a rat so that you are to become a rat. Huh. I think that is the way, unless you have other information that I do not. Well, the f- when you when I hear the term rat box, I think of like an old uh, method of torture where they would Ooh. place like a, a box on your chest or stomach um, that was open on one side with a rat inside of it. Ooh. And then they would heat up the box to make the rat burrow into you. Yum. So when I hear rat box soul switcher, I think... Mayhaps we I think are both correct. Yeah, I think it might be the same thing but you are the rat, and you Eating have to burrow yourself. into your own oh. flesh. Ooh. Awful. Um, Truly awful. Um, so, And then the melon baller is there for some reason. I, I don't... Yummy. I, I guess the people of Ravenmount really like watermelon. Or eyeballs. Either way. Yeah. Who am I to judge? I mean, we are... The, we, yeah, we are to judge. Cause that, I mean, yeah, I am to judge, but, you know... Mm. You so know. this is kind of sad because you know spooky inventions are always fun, but uh, I I'm understand. very interested in the teeth piano. I feel like that it's bad. It feels self-explanatory, but I'm sure there's some kind of macabre twist. To yeah, it. I'm sure it's worse than you think. Mm-hmm. Um, get, get bringing a new meaning to to tickle in the ivories. Ooh, ooh, awful. Yeah, truly awful. I mean, shout out to my uncle for making it happen in the first place. But yeah, it, wow, the foresight on this man. I sure hope this doesn't come back in the future in some kind of hilarious juxtaposition. No. that w- In this program, never. In this universe, never. never. Anyways, uh, in other news, uh, also, uh, well, kind of 
good news, bad news, depending on who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, Rage Beyond Death has won the lawsuit mm -hmm. served on them by the family of Brainbiter's victim and is resuming their tour. Let's fucking go. All those who previously had tickets that were refunded have the option to get their tickets back within the next week, at which point they will be going on sale to the public again. So if you had tickets, you got to get them within the next week or else they are going to other people. That is what I'm talking about, baby. I've already gotten my tickets back. Oh, I already saw my show. I saw I saw the first show of the tour. I'm gonna go see the last show of the tour. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll I'll join you. Oh, heck yeah, man, dude. Yeah, I think I might actually have an extra ticket. I think a friend of mine uh, no longer wants to support Rage because you know they have like gross negligence for human life. Oh my, whatever. Okay, but so do most wizards. Yeah. What's the where's the he, in my friend's defense? He didn't go to wizard school. Yeah, in your friend's defense, he's a fucking loser. So true. All right. You want you want to let's go see Rage. Together. Let's throw down, dude. Let's Fuck let's yeah. let's go let's go see Rage. They're they're pretty good seats too. Not yeah. quite not quite pit, but you know, we're we're, I could, we're pretty I could we're, maybe get us pretty close with to the I I think I might know one of their stage hands. I might be able to do something. Well, we'll talk. We'll cook on that after the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of after the show, it's after the show. Yeah. Welcome to uh after the news. We're done. Yeah. That's all for Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for thanks for scrying into this episode. Um you know, we had some some good news, some bad news, some great news, yeah. some scary inventions. Oh yeah, watch just out for a, those walking Iron Maidens. Just a typical Dan Candelia. Just this Candelian life, baby. <laughs> All right, I've been Violet Philemus. I've been Benedict Balthazar, the seventy seventh. Uh, we love you. Catch you later. Have a good one. Up next, uh, does it explode? The wonderful show made by wizards. Uh, four wizards about how many things you can explode with a spell. Ten. Neat.